After the positive reception to my last Detroit Become Human video, I decided to do some more digging to see what other little details I could find. Before we continue though, I have a couple of warnings. Firstly, and most importantly, this video will contain spoilers for Detroit Become Human, so please tread carefully. Secondly, I would highly advise watching part one of this video first. With that out of the way, let's continue. So first up with a very small detail, but one that highlights the human's opinions of androids perfectly. When you've escaped Todd's house of Alice and are looking for a place to sleep, you can go into the local store for help. This is how the conversation would normally pan out. At least you'll be out of the cold. What do you want? I'm with a little girl, and we have nowhere to go. Could you spare some money so we can get a room for tonight? Shit. A homeless android? Ah, that's the best yet. Look, this is a convenience store, not the Salvation Army, okay? You better go if you're not going to buy anything. If you head to the dry cleaners first and steal some clothes and then speak to the shop owner, his response will be slightly warmer. Can I help you? I'm with a little girl and we have nowhere to go. Could you spare some money so we can get a room for tonight? Look, this is a convenience store lady, not the Salvation Army. I can't start handing out cash to every bum in the neighborhood. I thought it was a really nice detail to add and one that could easily be missed. He's still an arsehole for not helping though. In the previous video I suggested that the lady with the baby at the bus station was also one of the ladies that attacked Marcus at the beginning of the game. I wasn't sure about it but I wanted your opinion. Well, when you're leading the march as Marcus, you can convert an android to join your cause. If you look closely at the family the android was with, it is definitely the family at the bus stop. They're even pushing a pram. Yes, she's adorable. That's it. Got the sandwiches. I called your mom. Let's get going before we miss our bus. You got the tickets, right? Also, in the comments on my last video, several people mentioned that you could find Todd at the beginning of that chapter. And whilst these two do look similar, they are in fact two different people, so I thought I'd just clear that up. You're free now. You get back here! The next couple of details were involving Zlatko, the lying scumbag. I had a bad feeling about Zlatko as soon as I met him, but there's something very noticeable the first time you see him which should warn you about his motives. I'll play the scene where you first meet him, see if you notice what I mean. Come on in. Don't be shy. Luther, would you be so kind as to take these ladies' coats? Oh, don't be afraid of our big friend here. Luther is just another android that I helped. He keeps me company in this big, empty old house. Please, make yourselves at home. How did you hear about me? An android. On the street, he said you could help. Did you see it? As soon as you're in Zlatko's house, take a look at his hands. They are covered in Ethereum, or as the humans call it, blue blood. This was actually suggested to me by this guy, so a huge thank you for pointing this one out because it blew my mind. Also, Connor mentions earlier in the game that blue blood disappears after a few hours, so it's safe to assume that he was operating just before Alice and Kara rang the bell. It was damaged by the bat and lost some Ethereum. Lost some what? Ethereum. You call it blue blood. It's the fluid that powers androids' biocomponents. Uh, it evaporates after a few hours and becomes invisible to the naked eye. Oh, but I bet you can still see it, can't you? Correct. Yeah. One more thing that may have slipped under your radar when dealing with Zlatko is how he addresses Alice. When he has Kara attached to his machine, he will say this to Alice. No! No! I don't want to be reset! Let me go! Ah! Oh, I forgot about the child. Um, 
lock it up. I'll deal with it later. Alice! Alice, no! Wow. Did you notice what was wrong with that sentence? He called Alice it. Now we know Zlatko is a scumbag and may have just called Alice it because he doesn't care about her, but more than likely he called Alice it because he knew she wasn't a human child, but in fact an android. As I said, small enough not to notice, but when you know Alice's identity, it could mean a whole lot more. Carrying on with Alice's identity, and I feel incredibly stupid for not picking this up when first playing, and let me know in the comments if you did, be honest. When you're carrying out your chores as Kara, Alice will give you a key to her lockbox. Inside is a picture of Todd, his wife and a child. The child looks nothing like Alice, and I mean nothing. This is a huge hint that Todd's wife left him and took their daughter and Todd replaced her with an android. Another clue that this happened is a drawing found in the same box. It depicts Alice with blood coming from her temple. Could this be a reference to the fact that Todd removed the chip from the side of her head? It would have been a little too obvious if she had drawn blue blood coming from the wound, but I thought these two clues about Alice's true identity were so cool to see. I just can't believe I didn't notice them the first time around. So that wraps up today's video. If you enjoyed, then a like is really appreciated. If you're a fan of Easter eggs, details and secrets in games, then perhaps consider subscribing as that's what this channel is all about. I'd just like to take this time to thank my awesome Patreon backers, Daniel Graham, Kevin Hummett, and Tobias Gustafsson. Thank you for all your support, and thank you for watching, and I'll speak to you all soon.